Well, good afternoon, business community, business leaders, entrepreneurs, multimillionaires. Uh, my name is Lionel Savage, and uh, I'm talking in the background tonight. But I want to welcome you to our citizen engagement to inform the Douglas County Strategic Plan and hosted by yours truly, our Douglas County Chamber President and CEO, Sarah Ray. Thank you for coming tonight, Sarah, and our Douglas Forward 2025 project team. Uh, most of you know uh, Ms. Tiffany Stewart Stanley, who will be with us this evening. And so I'm going to run through. Uh, kind of a quick set of instructions about tonight, and then we're going to get started. So a few simple requests for today's activity. One, we would ask that you keep your videos on during the meeting so that we can have uh, the best engagement possible. I don't count, but the rest of you do. And keep your microphones on mute uh, until it's your turn to share or uh, you know, talk with us. And then uh, you know we'll we'll instruct you when to uh, come off mute and then uh, go back on when you finish. I, I know all of you are Zoom experts, and so you do this all the time. But I think uh, this is good for us to kind of walk through these things and make sure that we have one a very clean recording because this meeting will be rebroadcast out to the community, and we'd like to make sure that it, it is as clean as possible. Now, you may ask, um, how can I share feedback about this project? Or uh, today, maybe uh, you're coming to this meeting because of the message that Sarah sent to you to tell you a little bit about it. But three ways that you can share feedback with us. One, you can always go online immediately, even during this meeting, in which I will put it in the chat section momentarily, to celebratedouglascounty.com forward slash strategic planning feedback. And it's a simple online form in which we just ask you to give us four, five, six, three, two, maybe you only have one, one big idea that you'd like to see the county focused on over the next five years as we build this strategic plan. Remember, part of this plan is really about citizen engagement. And so we plan on having, I would say, 30 to 50 meetings like this over the coming months. And we've already had several already in which we engage the citizens directly. You can also send us an email to douglasforward2025 at co.douglas.ga.us. I'll put that address in the uh, chat section as well. And that's if you have any questions concerning the project uh, or if you just wanted to send us something directly, uh, we monitor that mailbox all day long and we respond uh, very quickly to your questions or requests. And then lastly, probably the part that we're most excited about is what we're going to do tonight, is really participate in these virtual meetings so that we can hear directly from our citizens. As you may imagine, we've had meetings with uh, district commissioners and their constituents, and then we're also having meetings with different stakeholders. And, when um, I talked with Sarah probably about two months ago about this project, uh, Sarah said one of the best things that we should be able to do is to bring the business community to these types of, uh, to these types of meetings. And Sarah uh, put out the big call to you guys last week. And so thank you so much for coming. So without further ado, what I'd like to do now is um, turn it over for some opening remarks from Sarah, and then we'll get started. Sure. Um, hey, everyone. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Oh, hey, Miracle, there's your face. Um, uh, just wanted to say a quick thank you. I've been, um, you know, Linus and Tiffany came to me with this, um, you know, with this objective. And I think that it's uh, a couple of months ago. And I think it's hugely important that and I feel I feel grateful that they have thought to include the business community in this process. Um, as they mentioned, they're reaching out and talking with a variety of different groups and um, different kind of areas of the community, different citizens. Um, but obviously knowing that um, there is a strong business community here 
here, I think it's great that they want to make sure that the needs of, of our business community are heard as they build out a five-year strategy. So just reiterating what you said, speak freely, speak honestly. Um, it is all being taken into consideration and we're just happy to be, I'm just happy to be here to um, help host this event tonight. So um, I appreciate you all so much. So thank you, Sarah. Thank you so much. And we're excited by everyone's presence tonight. So I want to uh, turn it over to Tiffany and she will walk us through um, our discussion with you tonight. Well, good evening, everyone. I am so excited to see you guys here to help us with our Douglas Ford 2025 strategic plan. This plan will be the guidebook for our Douglas County Board of Commissioners when they are assessing the community's needs, but also planning for our future. So your input is so important and we're so excited to have you here today. We are here to listen, and that's the most important thing. We want to hear what you would like to see in the Douglas County government and what you'd like to see for Douglas County. So with that being said, we're going to start. I'm just going to go around our Zoom screen. I, we usually go around the room, but we're going to go around the Zoom screen. And I'm just going to go around, and if you would just tell me any ideas that you have that you would like to, to see the Board of Commissioners implement or things that you'd like to see for the community. So I, like I said, I know most of you, so I'm just gonna start up in my left corner with Miss Virginia Murphy. Miss Murphy, you're on mute, mute. Mm -hmm. Hi, sorry about that. I'm so used to being muted, I don't ever unmute. So um, good evening, everyone. So for me as a small business owner, I think one of the big things I'd like to see is Douglas County support the small businesses that are in their current community. Um, I, I have the opportunity of supporting other communities. And when I do, I actually hire in that community. So I have the opportunity to boost it. And I don't I would love to be able to do that here in Douglas County. Um, I'm in the city of Rome and every person on our job site is from Rome and that's 12 guys. And those 12 guys will now be a part of my company because we, we've trained them. And so now we'll keep them and use them on other projects around the state of, of Tennessee. I would love to be able to do that here in Douglas County. Um, and I don't, know that there are any uh, priorities given to local businesses and not just the black owned woman business, but any local business here to do the things that Douglas County likes would, needs to do. I also would like to see us, and I've heard about this already, but see us diversify in um, what we have to offer. So right now, to be honest with you, if I really want a really great gourmet meal, I go outside of Douglas County. I'm not here because the, the, the restaurants are not here. We do have a few, but we have a lot of the um, chain type restaurants. So I would love to be able to see us encourage um, just different I guess other businesses that come inside restaurants encourage even some local people to open restaurants, uh, have the ability to have the, the, and I've heard about this already, but I'll just keep saying it, the Trader Joe's and the um, all of those here in, in town versus me having to get on 285 and drive to um, one of the one of the stores there that I'd like to go to. Just want a little bit of diversity in the markets that we have and wondering how, I know that that is based on income of the households, but uh, which means then that in Douglas County, we need to draw more higher income folks in, not necessarily getting rid of lower income housing, but we need to find a way to balance to where we do have, um, some higher income families willing to come and live here in Douglasville. But I think that will only happen if we have things available for them here in Douglasville. Virginia, do you have like a specific area of the community where you think that that would be a best fit for or what you would what you would envision? I mean, is it downtown? Is it, a, you know, an underdeveloped part of the area? I'm just asking. You know, I love to go to Douglasville downtown. Mm -hmm. I think it's the cutest place ever. But I don't, again, the, if, if unless I go to Gumbo's or Gabe's, my options become limited. 
I don't care where it is. As long as I don't have to get on 20 and leave outside of Douglasville, because we all know what 20 looks like now. Uh, as long as I don't have to go outside on 20 and just be able to, I want to be able to live, work and play mm -hmm. in the same place. Uh, and right now that's a little bit difficult. Got it. Cool. All right. Did you have anything else? Nope. That's it. Thank All you. Right. Well, that was some great information and I really appreciate you sharing that with us tonight. All right. So next we're going to move on to Ms. Marigold Edwards. It's your turn to give your um, ideas of what you'd like to see for Douglas County. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Um, yeah, well, I run JC Freedom Now Shoulder for Women in Crisis, but I'm also a concerned citizen, always have been. And so um, some of the things that I would like to see are financial and other support for not-for-profits and other organizations that support the fabric of Douglas County and provide assistance to its most vulnerable citizens. So there may be some things in place at the moment but it would be nice to know, you know comprehensively what those are and um, if precisely how um, you can, Douglas County can actually help um, these organizations. I know that you do help, but um, you know, if there is a formalized thing or, or how does, how do the, uh, the not-for-profits, those that support social enterprises, how do they, they um, get support from yourselves, be it financial, be it technical support, whatever it may be, so that we can provide services or better provide services or provide services to more people that need it. Um, especially during the COVID pandemic, you know, it just exacerbated everything um, and more people were needing help. And to the credit of um, the not-for-profits, uh, many did step up. Um, the other thing that is of great interest to myself personally and to many people here is um, the, if the promotion of affordable housing. Um, so that could be via private landlord engagement, the, the, the county engaging in that way, um, facilitating the building of more housing and via private contractors and including our housing authority because um, certainly the, the people that I refer to the housing authority, um, they you know, obviously they're oversubscribed. But if we could use some of the land that we have or that the county or the city has, whatever the case may be, to build houses on, that would be wonderful because then there would be less of an issue around housing. Um, my other thing that I would like to see is, um, to, base, to make and keep Douglas County beautiful. Um, so a program to renew and develop the aesthetic of Douglas County, including the roads, the green spaces and the sidewalks. Now, I know we already have, um, I don't know if it's Douglasville or Douglas County keep beautiful, but I, I really would like to see um, the results of that. I would like to see um, that sort of gone out to the citizens um, so the city can, citizens can volunteer if they want to, and obviously some finances to go into that because it's going to take money to make our city beautiful and our county. Um, the other thing that ties in to the fact that I run a not-for-profit is attracting funding for business um, uh, in Douglas County to promote continued economic empowerment and development. So. I would like to see ways in which I know that there, I've, I, I, when I uh, listened to the last commissioners meeting, I know that there was some funding um, that's coming available for businesses. And I know that the, the chamber certainly um, oversaw some in the past, but if there could be more of that to support the businesses here, um, especially the fledgling businesses or the businesses that are trying to get started, and of course, the disadvantaged businesses. Um, we could have some sort of financial support where um, funding was attracted from outside, be it government funding or wherever, so that there'll be more support for business so that then they can just uh, provide services to um, the community. And um, then the other important thing for me 
um, is what you're doing today, um, which is promoting meaningful citizens' engagement in county government and following best practice models. So I'd really like to see a piece of work done on that. Um, what are the best practice models for engagement? Um, as you know, I, I mean, I've, I've been engaged for a long time and it's always that 80-20 uh, rule where, you know, 20% of the citizens, if you're lucky, might get involved and 80% not getting involved. But what is, uh, who's doing the, the best engagement, you know? Has a study been done about that? Um, if, if we want meaningful engagement where the um, citizens are really engaged with the process, then we've got to find those ways. They're, they're there. Um, but a little bit of um, so the piece of work that needs to be done around that. And so um, I love living in Douglas County. I love the people. They're amazingly supportive. And I just want to see it continue to prosper. Thank you for the opportunity to just give my little bit of input. Well, thank you so much for that information. We really appreciate it. All right, and our next citizen is Mr. Carl Peterson. Um, it's your turn to give us your ideas. May I ask, there we go. May I ask to have one or two people go next and then me come back? I'm trying to condense my thoughts to keep them from getting too long. No, that we appreciate that. Thank you. We <laughs> will now go to Mr. Paul Zakos. I hope I said. There we go. Sorry about that. Um, hey, everybody. How are y'all? Hey, Mayor Gold. Um, so yeah, so Mayor Gold, to touch a little bit about what what you were talking about, you know. We have a slippery slope in Douglas County where we, we struggle with a lot of different different things here. You know, we, we have our county commissioners that that approach that approach me and Bo about you know helping with the homeless situation. You know, these tent cities that tend to pop up in areas that people don't want to that don't want it and don't want them in those areas or you don't want to see them from the highways and things like that. So so we have situations like that now. We do have, you know, like Sanctuary Village, we do have property in the county that I think that we could actually, um, that would allow us to, to, to build affordable housing. And unfortunately, there's no such thing as affordable housing in this market right now. Uh, material costs are, have skyrocketed um, to the point to where, you know, people that build for profit are starting to slow down. So that's, a, um, that's an issue that we have and it's it's uh, i don't see it getting any better for a while i think uh um in, in talking with my guys my world is obviously real estate and building and in talking with friends and you know because you know my friends are construction guys and in talking with those guys they're having problems getting materials they're having problems getting supplies um if you've tried to uh order a refrigerator for instance or garage doors or things like that um, you know, Metro Garage Door, you know, probably one of the top companies in our county, they can't get materials. And it's just because the su supply chain is, um, is weak. So, you know, the weakest link controls the whole thing. And so if um, they're having problems getting drivers or whatever the situation is, um, you know, it trickles down to, to, to us getting things. Um, you know, obviously the, the restaurants and stuff would be a great idea, but, you know, a lot of those guys are just getting, you know, back into gear and I don't know if you've noticed if you drive around with what I do I drive around everywhere so you know today I was in Marietta and I don't think I passed a nice restaurant or a fast food restaurant that didn't have a help wanted sign outside so um it, it's uh it, it, it's it's a it's a tough tough situation to have because you know how whatever angle you look at it you know we got st uh, stimulus money out there to help these folks during COVID to get back on their feet um, but a lot of those folks are, are, are making more money staying at home with the stimulus money than going out and actually working. So if somebody was somebody, you know, I think the stimulus money, the extra $600 a week that they're adding to that, that's, that's basically $15 an hour for a 40 hour week, um, which, you know, is, is a living wage. And, you know, you can have that argument with what people pay and what they don't pay. Um, but when I talk to guys that I know that, that own businesses, I'm like, you know, what do you pay your guys? He's like, why? Well, you know, I'm, I pay my guys 12 bucks an hour, $13 an hour, because I can't, 
pay them 17, 18, 19 dollars an hour to get them to, to come back in. So it's a it's a little bit of a struggle for those guys. Um, and um, so, you know, I don't really know what the answer is. I just, you know, I, I, I analyze what I see and and, um, and and it's a slippery slope right now. You know, we love Doug, Douglas County, too. You know, we raised our kid here and and um, our business is here and our, our, our church is here. and our, My ministry is here and, you know, all the things we do uh, are here. And it, but it's uh, um, I don't really know what the answer is other than, you know, engaging with people and, and trying to find alternatives uh, of, uh, um, uh, of, you know, the, the, you know, the housing thing, I think it's a big thing. You know, I, I actually owned a house that I was leasing to uh, the board of commissioners. And it was a, it was a, I guess somewhat of a halfway house after judge McLean would put them on uh, probation instead of putting them in jail, he would put them on probation and had that, that drug court. Um, we would put them uh, in this house. The county commissioners were, were leasing it from me, where they they killed that program and 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 made them leave the house. And it was because it was mismanaged. They found out that folks that were staying in the house were actually uh, continuing to party and, and do drugs. And you know, the sheriff's deputy would come over there, and there were people staying there that shouldn't have been there. And so, it being mismanaged like that, which is you know a, a, a county government thing. Um, they shut it down. And, and when, when I told them, I said, I'll, I'll do as many of these houses as I can. I don't have unlimited money. Um, and we had one, one good house and it was a great house and it was in a good location and they killed the program. So, you know, we, 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 we look for answers in these areas. And then when, you know, when, when we come up with, uh, you know, a way to take a little bit of a bite out of it, then, then we kind of get, we get, uh, we get shut down a little bit. Um, so, I, you know, I, I don't know what the answer is for that. You know, uh, affordable housing is, is what we were trying to trying to accomplish there. And um, it, it kind of got snatched out from under. So, um, you know, always open to suggestions on that. I don't think land is, is, is an issue because, again, Sanctuary Village was put on uh, the old um, um, Humane Society site, so it was. I don't want to say it's free land, but it was unused land in the county, so the land was basically free. Um, so you know, do do we do we search for grant monies to to build these affordable housing, or, or and, and then you you have citizens that are like, well, I don't want you know everybody wants affordable housing, but no one wants it by your house, and that you know that that's the other battle you have. So um, I'm not sure where the where the comfort zone is with that with anybody, but, um, you know, it, it's still, it's still a problem. And, and, uh, I don't really know how to, to, to beat it by myself or with the small group of guys that would like to take it on. But, uh, um, I think just having a voice with our commissioners and city council and folks like that is, is, is what it's going to take. Okay. Well, thank you so much for that information. We really appreciate your input. Um, um, so we'll, if you have nothing else to add, we'll move on. All right, Ms. Chandran Pemberton, it is your turn to give us your, uh, your ideas. Well, thank you, Tiffany. Um, I definitely echo and agree with much of what has been said this evening. And Paul, agree with you 100% in terms of um, the difficulties I've, I've seen with hiring, um, as well as, you know, getting supplies, equally being in that real estate space. From the county's perspective, you know, what, an enhancement, just being a business owner, I would like to see, um, first and foremost, more of, a, of a, a synergy between all municipalities, you know, all of our local municipalities from the county, city, you know, and just the blending of two and a synchronized message, you know, in terms of what we're doing and how we're moving forward. Um, as related to developing the talent necessary to help push the minimum wage, the increase in our wages and pay. I've heard some uh, references to that also. Um, but potentially maybe um, working through a certification program, you know, for our county, for our local businesses um, and helping um, 
navigate a very specific platform that will support our small businesses, our local businesses, um, to help them position themselves to be competitive, to compete for um, those contracts, you know, with our local municipalities so that we can keep things, you know, localized here in Douglasville with those opportunities. So essentially, you know, this becomes, um, there's, there's value, there's benefit in living, um, running businesses, you know, everything here in the county in that aspect. So to that extent, you know, if we, if, as a county, we can get that, that, that thing right. Um, and being very intentional about how we support, um, you know, the dollars that are there that are available, making sure that that extra effort is given to give them, make sure it is placed with the right recipients, you know, and I'm going to say that the right recipients and having the necessary QC provisions in place on the back end so that the output, the product um, for, you know, how those monies have been used, we can see that it's going towards if that's going to augment, um, you know, if you are only able to pay your workers at $13 an hour, now you receive those extra funds and you can get them up to a 17. And now we've got that, you know, ongoing and then we can look, you know, thereafter. So uh, more about how do we, we help build the talent? You know, um, yes, you know, I think that's been uh, kind of a running thing about just the entertainment and restaurants and, you know, where do we, where do we as a county support the emerging trends of what we look like now as a county? You know, I'm, you know, a business owner. I live here. I have kids in the public school system and, I, you know, I work. And, and yes, there is that entertainment aspect as well. But nevertheless, I, I employ you know, individuals. So I'm looking for quality talent. I have three job opportunities open right now that I can't find the talent for. So what does that really, what does that really say? You know, is it, is it yes, you know, um, you know, with COVID, you know, from the state or federal level, we can say, you know, people are just kind of receiving this and they're not looking at things if it's not, if it's $15 or, you know, that's a, that's a benchmark. Um, but, what are what are we saying as a county um, to uh, attract you know um, certain dynamics? You know, are we are we a stagnant county? Are we a progressive county? You know, um, what are, are we thinking ahead? You know, in terms of what we're going to look like, you know, within the next five ten years. So for me, it's more about how do we um, work together to help build the talent by way of supporting our businesses? What can we do to establish some type of basis that is going, if we're saying localized business, you know, Douglas County, you know, local homegrown, what are we doing to support that? You know, are we just kind of on this rat race where we're saying these things and nothing is actually happening? So definitely an intentional proactive approach. I think a certification process would be um, instrumental in terms of, um, you know, registering, you know, our local businesses and giving them, I think, we, I know we have that MBE piece that's available, but where do we go beyond that? You know, if, if there's a way to uh, personalize it, make it more, you know, localized to, to us, Tiffany. Um, I can go on and on, but I'll, I'll just kind of stop there. But uh, I think we're definitely on the right track this evening with having this conversation. But um, I think it's, we don't want to be remissive of the fact that um, we do have some, you know, good housing. I think we definitely need to mix, you know, we can use some more upper, you know, um, townhome condos, you know, that in terms of the emerging youngsters, <laughs> you know, how do we keep those guys here or, or bring them in? Um, but nevertheless, um, we have some strong attributes, you know, that are here that currently exist. Um, the income, you know, the household, the wages, they're, they're here, you know, the, the data supports that. So we're not this county that um, is so rural that there's nothing there and there's no opportunity. I, I would beg to differ to that aspect because I'm not a reflection of that. So um, for me, it's, it's how do we move beyond? Um, how, do, how, how do I keep this thing going in a way that um, is sustainable? that creates a bit of, of legacy for, you know, 
my succession plan that I'm working on um, and what does that mean? So, yeah. Well, thank you, Mrs. Pemberton. I really appreciate your input. And so next we will go to Mr. Peterson. We don't have anybody else. So I got to, it was, it's your turn. So hopefully you've had an opportunity to condition your thoughts. But I we'll have. Do you want to give us, so. Uh, I I'll, have. I'll All right. So uh, yeah, thanks for having us tonight. So I've lived in Douglas County for about 25 years now. Um, so I've been out here for a little while. Um, and most of those years and certainly many years before I came, um, I think I think Douglas County rightly earn, earned a reputation for uh, fighting off joining the Metro Atlanta region. So in many ways, Douglas County positioned itself intentionally as an island. Um, and I think I think change is inevitable, but I don't think that change for the better is inevitable. So as a result of being actively opposed to joining our greater region, at some level being focused on, on not moving, over a 20, 30 year period, uh, we changed, but not for the better. A lot of cultural and community and narrative debt was built inside and outside the borders of our county. Um, the last decade has felt uh, better, frankly. Um, it, it's obvious that there's no longer this, this uh, this desire to, to be excluded, to island ourselves off from. Um, that said, you know, the biggest thing we've done in the county in the last 10 years is built a bigger prison. Uh, it's, that's, a, that's a hard thing to say, like, yeah, that's what I'm proud of, you know? Um, it, it, it's, it's not all bad, though. Um, the schools are getting much better. Like, you know, to, to the conversation earlier, um, um, Mr. Trent has, is doing excellent work. I have a lot of different family members that serve in the school system and they can say like just how much better it is now than it is six or eight years ago. Like it, it, you guys are doing so great there. The restaurants are getting better. You know, if you go out and have a restaurant today, you know, we, we, we can, we can, uh, there, there's, there's, uh, it may still be a small list, but you know, it's, it's five or six names instead of one or two. That's getting better. Um, we still got a long way to go, right? Um, it feels like a slow change right now, but slow changes are part of what it takes to to like come back from from a narrative deficit, from a, a, a cultural and a community deficit, to kind of start to try to retell our story both to ourselves and those outside of ourselves. Um, and so I think there's lots of really good work being done and I think that there's lots of really good trajectory. I think that my recommendation, if I had one, it would be to think of the things that we need. And there's been a lot of conversation here about the things that we need tonight. And I think that, you know, uh, we could debate over the level of need, but I don't think I heard anything here tonight that isn't a need by some definition of need. But how do we how do we take those needs? And then how do we, if we're talking about a five-year plan, if we're talking about a 10-year plan, if we're talking about setting some lighthouses out there that we're gonna strive to meet, how do, we, how do we concentrate what resources we have to tell outsized stories, both stories big enough to attract the attention of our wider region and those inside of our county? So, you know, think of the story we could tell if we did something so bold and big as like a community or municipally owned or directed fiber network providing accessible fast internet to every single address in the county, not to a few, but literally like if you're here, if you move to Douglas County, you can be part of the modern economy. No ifs, ands, or buts. You know, on, on the topic of affordable housing, you know, maybe instead of talking to, you, you know, to, uh, to Paul's point, this is a this is a tough nut to crack, and you know there are there are a number of world leading researchers that are 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 trying to say what's the creative way because the ways that we have tried to do it doesn't work for a whole lot of reasons for economic reasons and sociological reasons, but there's a bunch of people that are trying, and they're and they're thinking about it. What happens if we 
go and meet with some of those people and start saying, you know, what are your big ideas and can we say yes to some version of it? You know, on the topic of interesting housing, instead of, you know, trying to encourage a developer to like, hey, build, you know, build some cute houses or build some townhomes or something, you know, maybe we incentivize a developer into like buying out the entire mall area and then just whether we demo it or whether we rebuild it in place and build some kind of a really creative mixed use environment that gets us to, you know, it, it demands attention. You know, on, on the topic of, uh, shopping and dining like like you you can start thinking about how a couple of these ideas you might be able to plug some of that in where you instantly you tell these are moonshot ideas i'm aware right like like i, I i'm aware but in many ways we are essentially last place in our metro region not in every way but in many and i, and I know that that's a i know that that's a, a weight that people over the last decade have been trying that, you know, I, I've met so many people in, in, in civic organizations and not-for-profit organizations and in municipal organizations. And, and there's a whole bunch of people who got their shoulder, you know, to the wheel and they're pushing and they're pushing and they're pushing and there's so much good. But the thing that I keep thinking of is, is there's also so much good in the, around us. And like, we have to tell a story not only that's great, but in many ways, a story better than. And so I think it's going to take some bravery if we want to tell a better story than those immediately around us. And I believe we can do hard things and I believe better is possible. All right. Mr. Peterson, thank you so much. You've got me thinking. You got me thinking here. You got a lot of great ideas. So I really appreciate that, as all of you do. I really appreciate everyone being on here tonight. I just want to remind you, if you have not already done so, please go to CelebrateDouglasCounty.com, uh, CelebrateDouglasCounty slash strategic planning feedback and fill out the survey. Because even though we have your recorded responses, we would really also like to just, um, you know, you may think of something else and we would really like to have those responses if you have not already done so. Another thing that we really ask is that please share this with your network. I know everybody on this call, you all very well connected and leaders in the community. So if you know if you have neighbors or friends or just organizations that you're members of, we would really appreciate if you would just send out the, the link to the survey or text it, text it to friends because it's very important that we get input from everybody. We want the good, we want the bad, we want the ugly, we want everything. So please make sure to share this. And I really appreciate your input. I really enjoyed your ideas. And at this time, I'm going to um, go back to Sarah to see if she has any final remarks. And then from Sarah, we'll go to Mr. Lionel Savage to close us out. Thank you guys again. I mean, I loved hearing, I mean, I feel like it was like mixed emotions. Like I love hearing that the things that you guys have concerns on are things that have been addressed and that we're working on. Um, you know, there were some great ideas and suggestions, but it's good to know that the focus even now and going forward with the strategic plan and others that we have in place um, are addressing the needs. So um, it's very refreshing to know um, to know that, you know, our heads are in the right direction and this strategy will just help help build that out in an even in an even better way um, to make sure that we all have kind of an aligned focus on moving our community forward. So um, I just really appreciate your time. Um, loved all the thoughts. It got my brain thinking and rolling. I like made all kinds of notes of things. Um, if there's anything um, on behalf of the chamber that we can do to support you, your organizations that you work with or serve on, um, know that I know, I feel like I'm saying this and it's so because you all know me, um, but like you've got my phone number. Um, if there's any thoughts that you have, um, even after this meeting or any conversations that need to be have um, or had, I'm happy to have those and relay the information back to Tiffany um, or Lionel and I encourage you. We're looking at doing another one of these. So if you have other people that would benefit from their feedback being heard, um, please encourage them to come to these. Obviously, you can tell it's not a scary environment everybody's fun and it's pretty light and easy. So just want to thank you guys for taking the time out of your evening to, to be here and to help move our community forward. Well, thank you, Sarah. Um, thank you for all the participants tonight. I just want to leave you with a couple of instructions. Um, I'm going to be a tad redundant uh, because Sarah and Tiffany both have mentioned this to you, but clearly the most important thing for us is to get as many respondents as possible 
And so what I will do uh, by tomorrow midday, hopefully, uh, we will have this video ready for public consumption and we're going to send it back out to all the participants tonight. And then what we'd ask you to do is forward it on to any and everybody that you know in Douglas County. And here's what you're going to be forwarding. You're going to be forwarding this, this video meeting so people can watch it and participate. You're also going to get a couple of links from us, a link to the form so that when they get this message from you, they can click on the form um, and you know immediately fill out the survey. And then we may send you a couple of social media posts uh, as well uh, that really give you uh, give the, the receiver a little bit more information about what the project is all about. You know, just just really trying to deluge the entire community with information, information, information. Uh, it is really important for us to get this feedback. So please, as Tiffany mentioned, as Sarah mentioned, send it via text, send it you know on your social media platforms. Um, do anything you can to help us. We need people to come not only to our virtual meetings, which we enjoy, and we know that when we rebroadcast these, people are watching, but mostly the call to action to get individuals to fill out the form. And again, if you haven't filled out the form, please do so. Mr. Peterson, I heard all of your aspirational thoughts, but I need them technically on that form so that we can take them under consideration. As you can imagine, one of the most important things that we're gonna to have to do is to take all of the collective feedback that we're getting from citizens and catalog all of this data. And so meeting after meeting, Tiffany and I are beginning to hear themes of what we're hearing from citizens. And so a lot of you are really thinking alike, but we need to be able to catalog as many responses as possible so that when we go back to the Board of Commissioners, we can say, hey, of the thousands of people that we talk to, here are the big themes that we're hearing. And then guess what else we're going to do? We're gonna come right back to you and replay what we've already heard from the collective and say, here's what we're hearing so far. Uh, do you believe we're on the right track? So this isn't just one drive-by meeting, one drive-by engagement. We expect to come back to you weeks from now and to say collectively, here's what we're hearing. And so you always have an opportunity to engage with us through the life of this project. So again, thank you very much. Sarah, excellent host. Tiffany, as always, you are the best. We bid you farewell, but you will hear from us soon and look uh, forward tomorrow to receiving this. It will come from Sarah. Sarah will uh, send this back out to you tomorrow. And we thank you so much for your input tonight and have a great evening.